I'm Ryan O'Dowd, and you're listening to Ryan's Audiobooks on the Issues Magazine YouTube channel. Today we're picking up in section 1023 of Adam from the Son of Knowledge by Lex Hickson Nur al Jarahi. We're starting in the middle of chapter 14 New Light on Sufi Science. Thanks to its abundant spiritual inheritance, Humanity can live without fear in what is essential, no matter what the circumstances may be. Humanity can live in its own natural atmosphere, its essentiality, like a bird in the sky or an innocent being in a paradise age. On many occasions of our personal existence as well as throughout social history, however, this truly human inheritance, this necessary nourishment, is entirely forgotten or willfully suppressed. Yet in the most distant corners of the world, the most unknown zones of the heart, Sufi science always rediscovers living traces of this primordial inheritance, this openness to the one. The heart is always capable of catching fire in liberating ecstasy, igniting others with the sacred fire of illumination. With an ease that has no counterpart in the world of separation, the Sufi master breaks open our personal and social prison cells so we can consciously breathe the free air of the One, the atmosphere of only life, transmitting the open secret of unity to his or her spiritual successors as a living flame. Sufism exists outside classrooms. It's an irresistible movement of our being. It cannot be reduced to any formula. It provides direct access to the marrow of experience, which we can always use for the most concrete and immediate goal, the liberation of humanity, and the organic solution to its perplexity. Sufism is not an inert form of behavior, nor a fixed image of the world, nor a particular program of reform. Putting between parentheses all presuppositions of the personality, all commonplaces of society, Sufism presents an education in divine subtlety. This education generates an activity of our total being, free from ordinary ambitions, not because it disdains them, but because it transcends them. This ardent and hopeful education is the keystone of Sufi science, which does not submit reality to any rational or emotional project, but which erases all frontiers declared arbitrarily by the obscuring intellect. This education of our sentiment and intuition does not orient towards some fantastic future age, but focuses upon the immediate future. Yet, rather than the imminence of the final day, this science postulates the mysterious omnipresence of divine perfection, its interior riches gradually displayed like the opening of a luminous fan. Essence always displays an infinite creation. This science that continuously dissipates darkness is not mere academic knowledge or mere ecstatic experience. It is revolutionary action outside universities, chapels, and catacombs. An action without the slightest trace of animosity. An action that resounds only with reverberations of love, with affirmations of truth. The illumined ones who dedicate themselves to humanity, who engage themselves in Sufism, are not seeking refuge in scientific hypothesis or metaphysical speculation. Sufi science deals directly with ontological reality. The mature sages of every tradition who experience the eternal return of the One to the One, which is universal Sufism, repudiate all forms of skepticism and nihilism, as well as the basis, which it is called, in every culture and the normal perspective of life. The truly fecund and total education provided by Sufi science is not mere traditionalism. It does not indulge in regression to the past. To repeat blindly is the same as negating. On the other hand, Sufism is not the eclecticism with its complacent attitude that ignores the process of historical transmission, including its objective loyalties and disciplines. This science remains the center of convergence for all wisdom traditions, which are not interchangeable but are unique expressions of divine energy. From the panoramic perspective of this visionary science, one can appreciate the revelation of the same logos through the living facets of human history and the living structures of nature. This alchemical science distills the wisdom and beauty of all prophets. Universality of vision does not weaken personal commitment to specific religious doctrines, excuse me, religious traditions. With their powerful sacraments and doctrines, their rich historical particularity. 
We are walking on a sharp edge here, but it is necessary to read each tradition carefully within the limitless context of the one. The devotion to a singular tradition is easier than the penetration into the essentiality of all traditions, but both practices are necessary. Each initiatory line must discover its irreplaceable position within the whole. No sage can avoid the responsibility and the adventure of this science of universal insight that always rejects half-truths. The ancient coat of arms of the noble science reads, Decipher, Transmute, Glorify. These are the complementary tasks. Sufi science was the basis for ancient civilizations. It will also be the basis for future civilizations. This science, which is always contemporary, is the transformative manifestation of divine life, our sole root, the only root, of the universe. The technical education of the modern academy commits the fatal error of hiding and suppressing our instinctive longing for rootedness in the living one. Sufi education, on the contrary, manifests a redemptive character. Its principles and disciplines, which are more sense than thought, Witness to a mystical fervor and inspire one to meditate, not to make those summary judgments that are the dangerous coral reefs of the ordinary intelligence, gradually enclosing the soul rather than liberating it. In all societies and all epochs, the conventional world as well as its usual mode of education or its attempt to condition its participants is always a scheme proposed from outside the soul, a strategy empty of prophetic vision. Prodigious in confusions, habitual social interaction is always full of antagonistic perspectives, menaced by invisible tendencies of violence and ignorance, which are perpetually disposed to explode into form. This dangerous conventional world crystallizes secret conflicts we have not resolved. Sufism, with awakened and intelligent attention, escapes this whirlwind of limited selves, this cult and tyranny of personality. Sufi science practices sudden immersion in reality, in the peaceful ocean of essence. Following this baptismal experience, all attitudes and gestures of the Sufi lead toward the universal growth of love for God. Nothing and no one exists other than God, nor is it necessary to dress this existence of unity with the somber robes of a religiosity that suffocates spontaneity. Such religion impoverishes spiritual life which should be a union constantly more intense and more joyous with the one God, who is the most intimate of the intimate. Emphasizing the supposed distance or even abyss created between creator and creature, such religiosity is a rigid armor, a barren theory, a usurpation, and an abdication. The unique objective of Sufi science is to remain absorbed in God, generating a progressive illumination that ultimately pervades all humanity. This science differs radically from the ordinary play of perspectives, however sophisticated, which masks our pristine experience of essence. Reaching perfect balance with rectitude and with full consciousness of what is doing, this science, like a compassionate surgeon, severs all our links with the discord between religions, cultures, and personalities. This is a genuine science, not a fantasy projecting some alternative world. Sufism investigates and expresses truth, which is never influenced by our partial ideas and hidden weaknesses, either personal or cultural. Sufism is the vast, moral, intellectual, and spiritual renewing of fallen humanity, a process initiated and sustained by the Logos, the Divine Word, the guidance that alone is worthy of our total confidence. Blissfully free as it is from arbitrary forms, Sufism is not a field of anarchy empty of spiritual disciplines, nor is it a hybrid composed of ideas in vogue, whether psychological or parapsychological. Sufism is not the project, project of a minority that wishes to impose its strange beliefs on the rest of humanity, nor is it utopian ideology or political revolution. It is necessary to make these distinctions rigorously. Sufism is, in truth, a great wave in human consciousness that creates history and that is the fruit of the aspirations of humanity in its totality. Sufism is not the exhibition of miraculous powers, but the dignified inauguration of a magnificent reign of truth, an experience of new light, free from the pride of those who fool themselves with their limited methods, limited sciences, and limited theologies. Experiencing the living truth at the foundation of consciousness, the awakened person, the spiritual wanderer, takes shelter in this secret reign of Sufism, the most just kingdom that can be imagined.
The living power of truth splinters all facades, dispersing into fragments. All the sterile and empty projects that press to digitation of the controlling and separating self that defines the larger part of our assumed personal and social identity. The charismatic gift of truth power flows freely in the ardent hearts of those who continue the transmission of Sufism. These are the spiritual guides who arise among every people on the earth. Having received the empowerment of truth, they struggle and do battle without tiring and without resting, with great moral and intellectual vitality, with longing to penetrate to the nucleus of truth and distribute its light and its power to all conscious beings. What is called Sufism is simply the inspiring perspective offered by the testimonies of these passionate persons of truth, their poems, their conversations, their gestures, their brilliant silence. In open contrast with the anemia inertia and narrow-mindedness of the world and its institutions, these Sufis and their orders exist in dynamic harmony with all consciousness, generating new light and opening the mystical path with friendship and clarity to seekers of the truth in each successive generation. While they already live in the inward condition of celestial existence, the virtuosity of Sufis upon this planet is astonishing. Since they remain solely under the influence of God, their sincerity and integrity is beyond doubt. After physical death, their holy tombs become spiritual gems in the earth. Their souls, which have disappeared into God, become seeds of light, planted in the sacred earth of the human heart. The Sufi submits all faculty of perception and control to the only God. His or her spiritual passion inclines only towards disinterested action in love. Never pedantic or dogmatic, these perfected beings smile and remain silent. They are the revelatory texts of Sufism. Sufi science remains free from any authoritarian or inquisitorial tone, free from any inflexibility, by simply bearing witness to truth alone. In spite of the tyrannical reign of the domineering self, the surface history of humanity, Sufism flowers secretly within the radiant landscape of the heart. The mystical body of Sufism is not an organization ruled by jur 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 juridical principles, but a living organism that functions by renewing the conscious links of humanity with primordial presence. Careful investigation by means of Sufi science confirms that there is no arbitrariness whatsoever in the divine will. The universe could not be another way. To contemplate this science transfigures the nightmare of competitive relations between personalities and nations into the vision of harmonious relation between three finite parts and an infinite wholeness. This universal equilibrium is the network of lights in which all persons find their place as eternal souls. The existential consequence of this radical vision of the world is that human beings actually evolve into a different mode and dimension of living. Sufi science brings into profound question our presuppositions about the limited self and the limited society, which are waves of psychic conflict rather than substantial orders of being, envisioning the ultimate consequences of truly human existence in order to reveal with surprising clarity and directness the very one with whom, from whom, everything is born, and to whom everything is returning. <clears throat> this critical science erases the conventional notion of multiplicity as being a region, or even an existence separate from the one. This compassionate science channels divine power into the Sufi heart, which can offer refuge to the disenfranchised, refuge where tears are wiped away and destructive passions calmed, where treason and skepticism vanish, where the irreducible essence shines in total nakedness, this Sufi heart dares to manifest as an indissoluble current within the ocean of divine light. Historical explications and systematically imposed intellectual structures are insufficient for understanding Sufi science which transcends historical circumstances and passes beyond scientific, philosophical, and theological perspectives. Strictly speaking, Sufism is radically empirical. The experiments of this Sufi science are not laboratory tests, however, but tests of the heart, observations and investigations of the spirit. Sufism recognizes the value of critical sensibility and critical examination. It examines the suppositions that underline mundane consciousness. It criticizes the pretensions of the ego. Each Sufi heart, that is to say, each human heart that awakens, 
is vul- invulnerable in its essential reality, its fullness without boundaries. Each Sufi heart is the secret and powerful ally of a vul- vulnerable humanity. The Sufi heart possesses the sharp weapon of unifying knowledge, which cuts away emotional and intellectual passivity. Sufism does not exist as an objective structure, but as the delirious enthusiasm of true hearts, free from anxiety and anguish, hearts that palpitate as the divine attributes of beauty, compassion, majesty, subtlety. Sufism is not a transitory or accidental occurrence. It is our universal matrix. It's our original land of birth, Possessor of total vision, Sufi science is not an instrument of knowledge, but is divine knowing itself. Beneath the periodic variations in human history, sages discern this science of the one as the constant. But Sufism, the essential thread of gold connecting diverse civilizations, cannot be bought or sold, nor can it be produced in mass. It is the unique path of each soul to union with God, the path that never ceases to be surprising because the one is infinite and never repeats itself. In the open field of Sufism, no frontier separates spectators and actors. Each conscious being is a full participant in divine consciousness. There is nothing fixed or established in this drama of Sufism. There are simply the flowing, mysterious, and limitless possibilities of the soul, One with the only consciousness, one with the one. In the wonderful sanctuary of Sufism, there is no impatience, disdain, or irony, but serene contemplation of the original face, a contemplation by which all discursive apparatus is reabsorbed into oneness. Although fluidly expressing itself through diverse cultural and religious forms, Sufi science is not constrained to express itself through any form. Whatever differences historical religions may conceptualize disappear in the impartial science, which opens the way to the mystical annihilation of egocentricity and which communicates through words of nearness and words of intimacy, through secret twilight language and wordless gestures. This rigorous science strips the person of vanities and pretensions, showing us the exit from a world without transcendence, a conventional world locked into itself. Sufism liberates the soul from the police state of controlling ego, from the atomic holocaust of biological death, from the Chinese wall of apparent separation between humanity and divinity. Sufism opens totally to God. No one and no thing exists for this science except God. We cannot live except in God and by God. Sufism regains the ontological innocence that is common to all beings, a blessed ferment full of the lightning flashes of mystic knowledge and the delirious downpour of ecstasy. The science of incandescence manifests in a direct way that is both anterior and posterior to all intellectual operations, and yet completely satisfies the demands of the illumined intellect. Saving passion and sacred nourishment, this holy science is the opposite of modern sciences in their frenzy to know and control a driving ambition that implies violence. This peaceful science is the reverse of all chimerical attempts, modern or ancient, to grasp, employ, or even enslave reality. This science of the unconditioned manifests a totally distinct center and force of gravity than conditional sciences, a greater lightness, a greater purity of perception. The heart of this pure science is free from the deception and falsehood that popular imagination, and even the scientific imagination, claim to be real. Developing and unfolding entirely within uncreated light. Sufi science is comparable to the banquet of Socrates and the mystical supper of Christ. Sufism attempts to live and breathe according to this extraordinary perspective, perfect companionship with divine wisdom and divine love. Even the most common daily events now assume profound meaning and carry with them great spiritual responsibility. Emancipated from the burden of rules, habits, customs, and norms so painfully accumulated throughout human history, Sufi science reaches solid ground only in the one. Sufism does not condemn the natural world. Its goal is not to disincarnate but rather to lift all theories and experiences of nature toward a coherent vision of the divine creation, 
always immersed here and now in the luminous ocean of the One. As revealed by ancient Sufis and their modern successors, the sphere of daily relations in all its detail is essentially sacred, a transparent expression of divine will, an eternal procession from the One within the One, illumined by this incomparable science, free from personal evasions and cultural deceptions. The Sufi succeeds in transcending conventional religion and experiences true access to the path of love and wisdom, allowing his or her awareness to be guided by what is mysterious, rich in meaning, rich in spiritual rather than logical coherence. The disciplinary religion, as the disciplinary society or the disciplinary family, is an attempt to protect human beings against the violence and fear characteristic of the limited self. But the cardinal principle of Sufi science is non-violent victory over this arbitrary self. The lucidity to be able to face it and the valor to be able to dissolve it without residue into the one. Sufism is not some quixotic undertaking, some romantic trek to the edge of a precipice in vain search, but a precise and certain science by which to witness and verify all embracing oneness. The fruitfulness of any society depends on the presence of Sufi science at its nucleus. Both male and female sages, transmitters of this science of contemplation and absorption, collaborate valiantly in defense of the various mystical schools called Sufism. They live to protect and perpetuate this point of focus, which remains totally open to transcendence, this clear spring of divine teaching, which wells up in the center of every human community. The presupposition upon which the superficial norms of every society are established is the obsession with ego. This divisive ego is the fatal seduction. The enemy of true personhood and the exile from our essential homeland. The strange domination of this mannequin ego makes necessary the practice of contrition and penitence. The apparent or surface aspect of the human being, its rebellious egocentricity, is identified falsely with the real human condition. As a result, the abiding of mystics in the egoless essence of consciousness comes to be considered a transcending of the human condition. Not so. The unimaginable riches of selfless consciousness, the royal treasures of Sufi science, are flesh and blood of humanity. This is the true human condition. Each person contains, in embryonic form, the process of awakening to the essence of humanity, the process called Sufism. The obsessive self constructs an illusory wall between humanity and divinity. The only duty of Sufism is to vault this wall. This leap is not a return to the past or a projection into the future. The Sufi does not even take refuge in the present, conventionally experienced as an isolated moment. When we succeed in untying the complicated knots of the limited self, the earth moves beneath our feet. We are the unique, we are perpetual light, which diffuses through the mists of apparent limitation and dissipates them. We are now consciously marked by the seal of the eternal. Saturated with intense joy, we overcome at last the false order of a world allegedly limited by death. We are the source of delight. Nevertheless, the habitually constructed ego, insisting with great tenacity, I am, I am, and prolonging itself, throughout history is not abnormality, weakness, or treason, but simply the organic function of a nervous system. Over millions of years of battle for survival, the powerful structures of the limited self have become tainted with jealousy and suspicion. Sympathy and goodness are expressions of the eternal soul, which has opened a sacred way through this human nervous system, through limited selves and limited societies. The soul constitutes our real human condition, our true nature, vast and open, superior to all forms of tyranny, superior to the cultural and religious reductionism and imperialism called history. The soul experiences the complete concentration of multiplicity within the one. The soul is the mystic lover. The soul is the mystic path. The soul is our guide. The soul is our life. We are the single soul without limits. The melancholy stoicism of the surface strata of all societies is the expression of the limited self. Its superficial, autocratic, mechanical interpretation of the nature of human life and the universe as a whole. But this negative view is a mere intellectual declaration or a mere emotional reaction of the limited self, absolutely devoid of truth. Simply by posing with clarity and sharp sensibility, 
this critical problem of the limited self, and by demonstrating its mystical resolution, Sufi science resolves the conflicts within the human person and within collective social structures. This science liberates humanity from the exasperating and grotesque affirmation of its narrow personality, its abstract identities of race, culture, and religion, which are the forces manipulated by the charlatans and tyrants of all epochs. All conduct that is anarchistic and without compassion is rooted in fanatical adherence to the limited self. This obstinate desiring to be distinct or superior, this obsessive wish to occupy a post of great authority in the universe. This limited self, both individual and collective, manifests as a constellation of ambivalent notions marked by belligerence, aggressiveness, territoriality. This apparent self, with its characteristic ability to sustain the appearance of solidity, can be masked in sentimental effusion or false empathy, simply waiting for the propitious moment to reveal its chronic violence, which is the doctrinaire and militant imposition of its own forms. In the face of this catastrophic reign of the limited self, Sufi science works patiently and silently to re-establish our conscious links with the eternal soul. Sufism distances daily awareness from the chaos of the aggressive ego, turning it toward essential consciousness, the ever-flowing spring of living water. Sufism returns to the unity that exists here and now. The divisive self is the sorcerer's apprentice. Its eccentric career produces war and desperation. Sufi science, with great critical penetration, distinguishes rigorously between true and false, limitless and limiting, pure consciousness and ego. This science is the soul's response to egocentricity, to this dangerous knot of contradictions, a response that does not simply criticize ego but transforms it by awakening from complacency, which is the ego's principal hiding place. Obedience to the limited self is idolatry, the temptation permitted by God to test and define us. Idolatry is the crisis of the human species throughout its pilgrimage to the One. Sufism is the universal response of humanity to this crisis. Sufism is not an esoteric diversion belonging exclusively to mystical practitioners and rare contemplative orders. This common quest, this common breath, seeks and attains liberation and a mystic union for humankind. Consciously or unconsciously, the question all human beings eventually ask is, shall we truly exist or cease to exist? It is not possible to diminish the intensity of this question, which manifests in the human being from its very essence as a living seed that must sprout. But the quest for true existence is, in a certain sense, indecipherable. There simply is no intellectual solution. Reality is not one of the puzzles designed by the limited self. It is possible to be totally astonished by the One, but not to explicate the One. It is possible to be the One, but not to enclose the One. Remaining suspended even for a moment in the contemplation of the One by the One, the limited self is dissipated like clouds by a tremendous wind. The problem of life and death disappears. The chronic human schizophrenia, the dissociation between conditioned psyche and unconditioned soul, is blissfully healed. This reunification of all our fragmented perspectives is not reducible to logical reasoning. This elimination of the limited self does not imply the vanishing of the person in all his or her integrity and rectitude, entrusted with all possible responsibilities. After this illuminating integration of the temporal psyche with the timeless soul, which is simply a facet of the internal infinite diamond of the one, the entire network of social and personal forms, systems of rules and restrictions, chains of cause and effect, all become transparent to the one, but nevertheless do not cease to be valid for David daily life. In contrast with the psyche, the eternal soul, free from the self, embraces the entire phenomenological universe as a message from the divine beloved, as a totality that emanates from the one while remaining within the one. The lines of separation between diverse zones of being are now seen to be illusory. In his or her pilgrimage toward the kernel of consciousness, the Sufi never ceases to implore divine grace, without asking for exceptional favors from God, and without seeking miraculous powers. The Sufi blends with God by abandoning the self to the divine embrace. Thus the Sufi actually becomes divine wisdom and divine love. The soul submits to God without hesitation or reservation. 
The soul loses itself in God by whirling around its essential axis. In the revolution of awareness that accompanies this conscious reunion with God, and that extends beyond the frontiers of dream and waking, all pride, with its characteristic attitude of negating others, disappears within a single closing and opening of the eyes. In an instant that englobes every instant, the scenes of the universal drama accelerate and then evaporate. The great wind of the Holy Spirit sighs. The soul encounters no resistance, neither objective nor subjective. There is no more apparent congealing of divine light. The ordinary world is transfigured into a world that is in fact no world, beyond all limits of expectation, not passing through the filter of intellect. Only God can meet God. Only God can unite with God. Thus concludes section 1023 of Adam from the Son of Knowledge by Lex Hickson Nur al-Jarahi. Pick up next time with section 1024, also in chapter 14. I will see you then. Alam. <laughs>